You are so excited. I love, you know I what? I missed you. Missed you too. You bring such a beautiful energy to everything. How are you, Shlubi and Boya? I missed you. Before we start, Gareth, please tell Rina, Mama Rina, Greg, Dory, everybody, my ex-family, my family. I miss them so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, Shlubi, uh, in case you don't know, and if you don't, you've been sleeping under a rock, former host of uh, Future CEOs here on TripCentral.com. <laughs> Also, Mandela Education Program Ambassador. And she's here to tell us how busy she's been because there are these new things called Relate Bracelets, which she's going to explain to us in a second. Um, you just don't slow down. Uh, lockdown hasn't slowed you down, has it? It has. Oh, no. But, but, but Gareth, honestly, it's been a good thing. And C and I touched base on that yesterday. Um, I, I, I think it's just taught me just how to um, really uh, use my energy more productively. I think back when things were like in February and stuff like that, it mm -hmm. was honestly go, 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 go now. And I think I'm just utilizing my energy better at home, to be honest, to be really, really honest. So, okay, what it, apparently you're making a movie at the moment. Yeah, yes. Now, how, how does making movies under lockdown work? We have to have really, really strict quarantine and COVID uh, protocol. Which oh. is, you know what, Gareth? I have to be honest. It's, it, it, uh, I find myself very scared every time I go into set. But like most South Africans are feeling, we cannot sit at home uh, for more than three months, especially as creatives. I have to go work. And there's so much we can do virtually, but unfortunately, creating movies and creating a film is a humanistic uh, an industry, and it's a close contact industry. So we do the best we can with what we have. We've got medics on set, we've got checks on set, we've got COVID protocols on set. We know exactly what the labor law and occupational safety rules and regulations are. We're very aware that, you know, as creatives, we do multiple jobs, so... We take down on a register what other productions we're working on, et cetera, et cetera. So far, it's been good, but I, I, I have to admit, it's it, it, everyone is a bit on edge, but that doesn't add to uh, the 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 um, the creativity, and it just adds on extra stress. As I said, uh, G, we do the best and keep as safe as we possibly now, can. Isn't it really annoying? I mean, like, I know you're there to do a job of work and you love what you do. So there's there's no question there. But all of this stuff is just like, actually, we're just we're all actors now. You know, I, I walked into an office building um, last week and I had to sign in. Then there's some guy points this temperature thing at my head. It tells him it's 28 degrees. Now, if I'm 28 degrees, I'm dying of hypothermia. <laughs> Okay, so this, this this machine does fuck all. It really doesn't help at all. So I, I go through the, the ritual because that's what it is. It's a ritual to prove that you fulfill society's expectations of you during this thing. And then they point this thing at you they, and you have to write down your temperature like a good child. And then you have to sanitize your hands with something and they spray something on your hands. Sometimes it's sticky. Sometimes it's alcoholic. Sometimes it dries you out. It's revolting. It doesn't necessarily do a damn thing to cleaning your, your, your hands of COVID. Then you have to wear these dumb masks. I mean, it all feels like we're in this performance art and it's not even artistic. It's frankly, it's boring. And you go through these rituals really just so that you don't get extra uh, excised from the community. So you don't get um, thrown out. That's what it is. And I'm going through it and I'm, I'm doing it out of respect to other people who are absolutely, genuine. Absolutely. What a lot of shit. Because the you next thing, the next thing on your movie, you have to do a scene where you're kissing the guy. I mean, do me a favor. You can't sanitize each other's mouths. Babe, we don't even do that. And there were kissing scenes in the scripts. And obviously, we couldn't do that. And you know what, Gareth? What bullshit? Honest, so now, now we don't kiss in movies? No, we don't kiss in movies. And we're not going to kiss for a very long time. You know, Gareth, honestly, I actually have been in lockdown level five. And you know how much I love people. Babe, this is... COVID I'm has really... Oh, it's driving you. broken me. I can hear no, you're... I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm a kisser. I'm a hugger. See, I, yeah. you know that, Gareth. You know me. So yeah. this has completely broken every sense of my physical being and my love language, which well, is physical touch. We're mm. all actors now, and we're all acting like we are doing something about this disease. But ultimately, we are all going to get it. 
And we've just got to deal with it when it comes our way and hope that we're strong enough and our immune systems are strong enough to deal with it. That's all you have because there are two things that can make this disease go away. Number one is a vaccine, which we're nowhere near having. And number two is a herd immunity of some kind, like humans have developed immunities to all the other diseases that have tried to wipe us out in the past. This is no different, no different at all. You know what, for me, Gareth, it's just for the people who've got compromised immune systems and the elderly. Yep. That's it. Or the, and us fat folk, not me, I'm fat, I do not want to die, I'll stay at home, and that I... is fucking why. Sleeping and fucking chilling and smoking blood sand and being lonely. <laughs> and now I'm back at home and I'm very I'm alone. Level five. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Lutz, um, no. you, you haven't, other than going out for the movie occasionally, you haven't left home much? No. How's the how's the family? How's your husband? He's great. He's in the healthcare industry, Gareth. So um, he's in the healthcare sector, working with clinics, working with insurance, working with as you, as you can imagine, psychosocial, which there's a lot of. Oh uh, wow! Of, yeah, it's it's. You actually said to him the other day that hopefully him and his team are decompressing because the information that gets thrown at them every single moment and every single day is going to affect him at some point and it's going to come back to my heart. So well, it's so interesting. I mean, it's it's so weird that you bring this up because we've actually on my TV show tonight, uh, yes. CM, 2030 on ENCA, Channel 403. Yes. Let's give it a yes. break. So what now? Yeah, thank you. On the show tonight, we've got, um, among other guests, we've got some great guests, but one of them is Dr. Elna Rudolph, who's a sexologist, yeah. and she's a medical doctor. Yeah. And she talks about, um, you know, sex during the pandemic and what that's all about for people. But she also mentioned, and we mm -hmm. talked a little bit about the mental health of people. Yeah. And Gord just hinted at this when he said, you know, he, he sang his beautiful song, and then he joked like being lonely. But I think there are a lot of people who, and you are, a, you're a very socially interactive person. You love to, as you say, hug and kiss and you, you're full of energy. You love people and you bring a huge amount of energy into everything. I think Gord is similar. He like he likes having people around him. He likes energy. I mean, you can be. I a like girl. a bit of a hug. Yeah. I'm a bit of a cuddler. I'm warm. I'm upholstered. I'm business class. Poor Blackie Chan. <laughs> As, honestly, I've turned into Elmira. Poor Blackie Chan is just like I don't know whether the cold outside is better or Blackie the hairy, Chan is his cat. Or the hairy hug that keeps stroking me. But she's kind of just given in. You can see like part of her has just lost the fight, and she's like, "All right, do it." But, oh, but she, she comes and presents herself and like just like reluctantly lies on me and she's like, right, go ahead. I'm not gonna fight it anymore. I'm tired of being chased. <laughs> so you pet her nonstop. Yeah, like you know, you do them like you know when you're a kid, you get those balloons that are like folded inside out and full of water and they're hard to hold. They're like squeeze out of one side. You have to like keep you have to keep and then your downward pulling motion, which also results in a stroke keeps the cat from getting away and you can suspend and you can if you get it right it's like juggling you can do it forever what a sad thing. <laughs> good morning god good morning hi you so are you two okay uh you know i i'm not joking about this i'm i do think there is a psychological and mental i'm not okay I'm you're not, not okay, okay. You okay tell me about like babe i had like a bad day yesterday and it, you know it gets to you you know um if it, it's not one thing it's the next it's fucking load shedding which just broke me out yeah, like, it's just... babe like that was the tip you know mm -hmm. and I, I, yeah and i had a bit of a meltdown yesterday but good good morning i'm here today and i literally have to take it a day at a time otherwise it gets too much otherwise i, I will i'm not coping you know i'm um, honestly struggling I'm Sorry, continue, please. No, no, you, you go for it, Gordy. I, I, I was just saying, I'm I'm struggling not as much with the lockdown and all of that. It's obviously not ideal and it's, it's not great. But I'm struggling more with the negativity of people. Like in general, yeah. the fact that it's the only topic to talk about. Look, there are big news things. If they develop a magic medication or there's some huge I spike see. or some law is changed. Or for example, reintroducing the alcohol ban. Like those little bits of news, cool, we, we must discuss them. But to only talk about COVID. COVID and politics and the negativity yeah. going on. It's like, shit, we've got to deal with this as it is. And the only, our only little window into the world of our friends and people we care about and our business associates, it's only talking about the worst shit going on. So Absolutely. I've become very socially withdrawn. 
I, I'm very in touch with my close friends and that's yeah. made it even in some cases more so like me and two of my besties my home bros we've got a little group and we've never been a the group type but it's really it's we keep we keeping in touch with each other probably more than we normally would on a on a, on a week to week basis but it's not mm -hmm. so much so it's not so much not not having access to people it's the fact that the access you have is through a fucking sewer of yeah. misery and opinion and and the hatred and intolerance you know, it's, and it's fucking Gordy, idiots Gordy, you know what i'm very aware and i'm very um, i keep a very high priority that i'm immune to that because I, I, I i'm very sensitive to energy just like you and it's just energy vampires and it's my mental health and my mental state that's but my at the moment priority. it's your only window to to quite a lot of people like normally you you know you've got like social interaction so it's such a yeah. pity that this magic tool to solve the main psychological impact of of lockdown which is isolation and and yeah. uh, separation from your social situations this amazing tool that we've got for that is actually just failed most and is so miserable so from yeah. a, from a mental health perspective on, I'm, I'm i'm very withdrawn and you uh, know what, Toby, yes no i just wanted to ask you, you you said you had a bad day yesterday yeah so what do you do to get to snap out of that? How do you, because you can't use, as God's pointed out, you, you don't know, you know, if you wanted to go for a coffee with a friend or, you know, go out and have a drink with somebody, you could do that before. You can't do that now. So what do you do to snap out of those bad days? I actually just go through the motions. I really do. I just go through it. I'm sad. I cry. I, 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 I'm angry. I really just go through the motions. But thank goodness I have a spirit of, okay, that's done. Uh, today is a new day. Let's yeah. try and make it, try and make it better. And what I was just wanted to add to Gordy, uh, uh, Gareth, is that I think right now uh, the biggest and most powerful skill that I have developed over these last couple of months is sifting out the information that I want to consume on social media and mm. that I don't want to consume. That yeah. for me is something that I've honed on and I've actually become very good at. I know. Well, that's a, that's a bit of a out. Out. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good thing to be able to do. I, just, I have to. I have while, to. while we're talking about this, just quickly tell us about the Mandela Education Program and about uh, the Relate Bracelets, please. Uh, what, what is this all about? This is something you're involved in at the moment. Uh, um, I, I love you so much for giving me this platform. So quickly, like uh, my two-minute elevator pitch. So because of lockdown and because of COVID, um, I think that library handovers and, uh, and school visits and container libraries, which is basically what the Mandela education is all about and bringing those to disadvantaged com um, communities is not a priority. It's more hunger and it's more employment. Well, that's what I think. And basically for me doing this for over 15 years, I really mm -hmm. want to keep people employed and keep people fed. So the Relate Bangles are made and created by vulnerable women, HIV positive women. Our Gogos are grandmothers in the townships of Langa, which is Nyanga, Guguletu, uh, um, Athlone, all the uh, obviously townships of, the, uh, of Cape Town, whereby because that we're not selling books or we're not giving books anymore, they don't have a source of income. And right. usually we know the South African stats when it comes to uh, 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 single uh, um, uh, headed or child headed or elderly headed uh, um, households, these gogos basically are feeding and keeping together three generations within a shack. So what I'm trying to do at 30 bucks a pop is get people, people to really buy so we can keep the gogos and the HIV positive women and the vulnerable women in uh, the townships of Langa, Gugule, Tunyanga, and Athlone in Cape Town employed and be able to feed their families. I know right now people don't want to go out and do things because of COVID, so you can do this in the luxury and the peace of your own home and also get a bangle, which is good because you're wearing the bangle, which can give you some authority of, so I've done something good and it is relatable because it's community-based. And that's what I love about it. Are those them on your wrist there, Libya? Yes, the one that 40, you... yes, Okay, 40. so the listeners can't uh, can't Just see them, obviously. It, but Lord. they're very cool. They've got like a bit of a bead vibe going yes. on. They look a little bit like fusion of modern and traditional. Yes. That's the kind of thing you'd buy. A tourist might buy that or somebody with a bit of an Afrocentric fashion view might access that shit all day love it love it love it god you put the words out of the mouth and also mm. god within the little bracelets is a little uh, pendant and it's got words like hope and freedom and peace and just it's just a like cool vibes you know what i mean and, yeah. literally, and literally it's so authentic because you can you can feel that it's just simple and it's made from love and it's just made from really right. wanting to do things made by women who are doing the best with what they have Gareth. Yeah, no, it's a it's a great listen. This is a terrific movement. So you can go to relate 
www.co.org.za. Yes. You can buy, buy a bracelet for 30 rand. Yes. And then you can wear it. You can post it on social media. And uh, maybe you'll get some friends to do it too. And you're helping some really interesting and really good causes at the same time. It's terrific. Yeah, I mean, that's a good that's a good bracelet for 30 Rand, even without the huge social impact. So get on yeah, down yeah. and get you a bracelet. I like Very nice. Course. I like yeah. your bracelets and I like you too, Luby. Oh, we've set up we a love connection here. Central. We make friends. Mm, you, guys, you, know? you guys should definitely have We have actually online. met a few times here and there, but I've, uh, I've seldom had the proper conversation opportunity with you. I, so I this think it would be nice. exhausting to be in a room with the two of you. <laughs> yeah, fuck. High, high energy. Yeah, like, like using Red Bull in your coffee instead of water. Always. I- Uh, Gareth, you're looking like you two are, a- are like Red Bull. Uh, okay, so uh, Luby and Boya Arnold and uh, Gord Laws having a, a little moment. Listen, I think it's really important that people use the other technological tools that they have at their disposal, things like Zoom and uh, you know Google Hangouts and, and uh, Microsoft Teams or whatever, also just to connect with their friends. Um, I've got a, a WhatsApp group of friends, and we actually got together like last week, and we're trying to do it every two weeks, mm-hmm. just to keep just to keep tabs on each other. Some people are handling things better than others. You know how it goes. And I think it doesn't just have to be for work meetings. Okay. And then you play around with crazy backgrounds, and you talk a lot of shit, and you everybody has a drink if you can, or you have some coffee or whatever. And you sit there, and you actually just talk to each other like you normally would. I know it's not the same as being physically present with each other, but it helps. I, I've even become, I like, you know how it's become not so cool to just phone people if you haven't like said, hey, like text them first type of thing. With my friends, obviously not like randoms or acquaintances, but with my proper friends, I've become shameless about like a sudden uh, unplanned WhatsApp video call. And obviously like, people can't always answer, but I'll be yeah. sitting on the couch smoking a blunt. And I, like my friend will answer and they're like also sitting somewhere random, but I'll just ask some question and then put it down. It's like, I just feel like I have the right to stick myself in the face of everybody and I'd be like, hey. God, I've never understood that protocol. Like, you know, you know, you you, you text first before you WhatsApp call. With young people, like, phoning is considered invasive. I, I like know. with people 30 and younger, phoning someone is like, oh my God, can you believe they phoned me? You need to like set that up. You need to let them be, people have to be in the right mental health space for a phone call. They need to get themselves into a safe place and then prepare and then have to have a social interaction, which is traumatic and anxiety laden for young people. It happened when people grew up from little with phones, with people in them that were more interesting than the people in the real world. And so now having to talk to a person is like asking somebody to go naked, to to, to perform naked on stage in a G-string. Where did this all happen? It's like I didn't. I, I I I never got the memo. Yeah, but my homies. I mean, if you don't have your if your phone, yeah, uh, if if you pocket answer, um, you're gonna have me in my underwear Listen, in front of the a, whole board. Oh, I Lord. got a very I got a very strange uh, message from someone who's not really a close friend, but just saying, "Hey, how are you doing?" The other day, and I thought it was kind of weird because I'm not a very emotionally needy person, unlike you and Fluby Gord. Um, <laughs> Wow. Somewhere a person is listening who texted wow. Gareth yeah, I know. A, a hey out of the blue message and he's hearing this and going, I thought <laughs> like, you were uh, uh, now. Don't get me wrong. I'm like, no, no, he's he's by no means a close friend of mine. And in fact, he lives in the UK now. Tier three like, acquaintance. No, he's a he's a great guy. And I mean, we've met a couple of times, but I don't I wouldn't claim to know him at all. And if, if you, God forbid, if you heard he passed away, how sad would you be? That's well, always my measure of how, how much I care yeah. for someone. Is that, is that your measure, Gordon? Yeah, I think I think I think just a little bit. Not like I don't go on a morbid deep dive into the sadness. I just momentarily imagine the feeling if I got that news, and I'm like, oh yeah, tier three acquaintance. Like, oh, wow. Yep, I would I would shake my head and go, that's fucking oh. awful, man. And but if I and, and and I would if I ran into any mutual friends, I'd be like, "Hey, condolences, bro." That's tier three reaction. So this guy, he sent <laughs> what a pity! Fuck. It turns out he's he's actually like checking in on a lot of his friends. He's just yeah. doing he's doing a little housekeeping to make sure everybody's okay. And I'm like, well, you know, you didn't have to do this with me. No, oh, but, it's but I, I'm also doing that with people. I just you know how I've met Lars Ulrich twice. I didn't check in on him. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, keep, I can just watch his like little YouTube videos and I can keep up with him. Uh, there's some some people appreciate it though. So if you if you are that kind of person, and I you, hear you. Yeah, do it. I hear you. Is anybody you. checking out Charlie's to run? Yeah, look, I mean, for some people that could be the the thing that keeps them going that day, hey? Okay. So don't hold no. back. If yeah, you, jokes. If you, I agree if completely. Some, if you've got I some love you to give, if you've got extra energy, if you feel like you can do something for someone else, please do it. I hear it, you, guys. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to you, maybe, but it can really save someone's life. I mean, I Jesus, there, the number of, of sad stories that are cropping up. I got, I got some emails yesterday because I, I try to go through them in batches. And there is not a day that goes by that someone doesn't tell me they've lost their job or something. But yesterday, I got this really hard email from a woman whose daughter had died during lockdown and man, it was just hard. It was hard as nails to read this thing. And it knocked me, uh, you know, occasionally you just have to yeah. take yeah. the little thing because we're all struggling with little things and yeah. some of us are struggling with slightly bigger things. But when you and get a lot of people all, are struggling going in, a lot of people weren't okay the day before lockdown. Yes. I imagine how they are now yes. on month, on month yes. 47. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, just if you've got a little extra, I hear you, Gary. Spread, spread the love, yeah. please. Uh, you know. I yeah, you. I agree with that, and that's part Thank of what you, me Gary. springing. That's part of what me springing little calls on my friends is about. It's for me, but it's also for them. And you know, hey, no one has to answer. But yeah, I've also got a couple of mates that are are, are, are dealing with it better or worse than others. And um, I think just sometimes hearing that someone's thinking of you, it's also nice to have that opportunity. Like, there's a social construct around having an opportunity to have a quick bitch. Like, I get together with my bestie Gumpy. Like, we we go and we have like a a, a a lunch or whatever. And sometimes during the working day, and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a few minutes late. Fuck, work so hectic. My boss, whatever, is being such a dick. Uh, and can okay, let's get settled in and have something to eat. And then you get it out of your system. Like now, it's like, okay, well, we're scheduling a conversation. We gotta like know what to talk about. It's nice to just yeah, how you doing? Ugh, I'm just myth. What's wrong? Uh crap day, blah 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 blah. Girlfriend's fighting with me. No, no, no. We lose that, those little opportunities to just let off little little vents of steam through the day. Well, imagine or little bits of love, steam or love, whatever you want to sure, let off. You need to let it off in little blasts. Is, how hard this is for people in um bad yeah. marriages, <laughs> you know, or yeah. or people who are who is stuck with someone and because they're in lockdown together, they can't get away from each other. There was that yeah. lovely meme that said like, Hey guys, in this time of crisis, please remember that a lot of your friends or your single friends are alone. So please check in on them every, every now and then just to remind them how much you're actually fighting. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes, please. It's like every time you have a row, just text your single friends and go, hey, I know you're single and lonely, but we just had this stupid fucking fight and it was terrible. Ruined yeah. carte blanche completely. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, carte blanche ruins itself. Why do you need to get involved and help? We don't need help? that. We don't need that. Did you work out in your driveway? Yes, Luby? I slam. I slam. <laughs> this is another another place where the hyphen is important or the or, or the combined word. Do you work out in your driveway or do you work out in your driveway? Yeah. Let me say that again. You work out in your driveway. So if someone in your neighborhood is watching, they'll see you doing exercises in your driveway. Correct. And they think I'm nuts. <laughs> It'll just look like there's a Tasmanian devil doing a little... They think I'm nuts. They think I'm nuts. And I've been doing it... Since, as I said to you, it's still lockdown level five in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do? Do you have you got weights, or do you just no, do? No, no, I just run up and down the driveway. So my neighbor says she can see like the driveway. So she says to me, she can hear the pitter patter of my feet. So she woke up, went to her fridge, um, went to go for a shower, <laughs> got upstairs, and I was still running. <laughs> I have a feeling the pitter patter of your feet sounds more like. <laughs> Yes, yes. I haven't. I'm still in lockdown level five, y'all. <laughs> Jesus, you you got so much energy. I love it. All right, love, 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 be good. We love you. I lots. love you so much. And um, it's great to check in with you. Relate uh, is the is the bracelet that Luby wants you to go and buy because it'll help people, uh, not just in terms of of their education, but their immediate needs. And uh, these goggles in the township will get your support as well as the people who ultimately end up getting the money to relate.org.za. 30 Rand is what a bracelet costs you. And you can use the hashtag relate goodbye malaria or relate bracelets or rel bracelets for good yes. or wear and share. 
Yes. Any of those. Very good. Get your, get your drip on for a good cause. Thank you so <laughs> much, Gareth. Thank you, Shloop Shloops. Thank you, Gordo. Love you, Gord. Love right. you, Sheila. You too. Wow. Wow. Very nice.